Good morning, friends. Today, we are going to talk about Fire Safety Week. What does that mean? Fire Safety Week is celebrated in October, and it's when we learn all the important things that we have to do in case that there's a fire. Now, if you're at school, you know you do something called a fire drill. And the first time it happens, it might be a little scary, but it's a really important thing to learn in case there's an emergency and you have to get out of the school fast. But it also shows you that you don't have to be afraid. And if you take a deep breath, everything's going to be okay. These kind of things are here to keep us safe. So this book is about Miss Mingo's class and her first fire drill with them and how some of the kids are a little afraid and what they do to figure out how to go with Miss Mingo and the fire drill by Jamie Harper. What I really like about this book is that even while it's telling us a fictional story, which means it's not true because the animals are wearing clothes and talking, it has real nonfiction facts in it that tells us what happens when animals get scared in the real world. So let's find out what happens in this book. It's fire safety week, Miss Mingo announced to her class one Monday morning in early October. We'll be learning what to do in case there's a fire. My Grammy had a fire, Alligator said. It was in her frying pan. The smoke detector went off and it was really scary and my French toast got burned, but I ate it anyway. Everyone agreed it sounded very scary. Panda started barking, elephant trumpeted, and bird growled. Animals use a number of defense mechanisms to protect themselves from danger. Many of them make loud, harsh sounds to scare off predators. And Monkey honked. I'm afraid of smoke detectors, he admitted. What's wrong with your nose, asked Bird. When danger threatens, a proboscis monkey honks loudly and its large fleshy nose swells and turns red. But before Monkey could answer, the room started to shake. Elephant was stomping his feet and flapping his ears. I'm afraid of fire trucks, he cried. Frightened elephants stomp their feet, flap their ears, and trumpet. Younger elephants may push their ears way to the side to appear more threatening. Now, now, let's simmer down, said Miss Mingo. I know a fire can be scary. Just thinking about it makes me want to hide behind my friends. But I know I have to follow the rules when there's danger. So today, we have a visitor coming who will teach us how to be safe and well prepared. Flamingos move in large, tightly packed flocks, making it easier for them to spot lone predators. At that moment, a very big bear entered the room. Good morning, he roared. Snake hissed loudly and puffed up his body as much as he could. When threatened, a hognose snake inflates his body to resemble a cobra. It also flattens its head and hisses. Pig darted away from the bear and dove under Miss Mingo's desk. No need to be afraid, Miss Mingo reassured them. It's just Chief Grizzly under all that gear. A startled pig will run away and then quickly turn around to face whatever frightened it. If necessary, it will charge its enemy and use its tusk to attack. The chief removed his mask. Firefighters need to wear all of this to be well protected, he said. It's called turnout gear, Frog said proudly. It can weigh up to 70 pounds. It didn't take long for the class to warm up to Chief Grizzly. What do you do when the smoke detector sounds, he asked the class. Get out and stay out, yelled Frog. Right again, said the chief. Does anyone know what to do if your clothes catch on fire? Everyone knew that answer. Stop, drop, and roll. Miss Mingo promised Chief Grizzly that they would work on their technique. On Tuesday morning, Miss Mingo explained that sometime soon there would be a fire drill. When? asked Narwhal. I don't know, asked Miss Mingo, but don't worry. We will practice and we will be ready. She listed the steps that they would need to follow. Stop everything. Get in line with a buddy. No talking. Follow the primary route out of the building. Go to a designated spot outside and line up. First, they practiced lining up. Alligator insisted on being the leader. Koala brought along a snack, and everyone was talking. Remember, said Miss Mingo, everything stays here in the room. Even my eucalyptus, asked Koala. I can't leave it behind. Koala was so upset, he started rubbing his chest and growling. Pee-you, exclaimed Alligator. What's that smell? She dropped Koala's hand and ran to the end of the line. Koalas howl and wail when they are upset. In some aggressive encounters, the male koala rubs his chest. The glands then release a strong, musty odor. 
Oh, my, said Miss Mingo, opening a window. Why don't we practice some more um, outside? Today we will take the primary route to get outside, Miss Mingo said as they left the room. That's the most direct way out and the closest to the building's exit. The secondary route, announced Frog, is just another way we can go in case we can't use the first one. Miss Mingo gave him a nod. There was lots of noise as the class made its way through the halls. Finally, Miss Mingo's class made it to the meeting spot outside. Miss Mingo called each student by name. When Panda didn't answer, she scanned the schoolyard. It didn't take Miss Mingo long to spot him wedged up in a tree, all curled up. Panda, why aren't you in line? I'm scared, said Panda. What if I'm all alone in the bathroom when the alarm goes off? No one will be left behind, said Miss Mingo. The teachers and the firefighters will check the whole school. They'll then tell us when it's safe to go back inside. A panda escapes danger by running away or climbing a tree. If trapped, it growls and swipes with its paws or simply covers its face and curls up into a little ball. On Wednesday, Miss Dillow, the lunch monitor, came to eat with the class while Miss Mingo ate in the teacher's lounge. Suddenly, a loud sound ripped through the classroom. Excuse me, said Hippo, wiping his nose. It's the fire drill, yelled Cockroach. No, no, it was just a sneeze, cried Hippo. But no one heard him. Giraffe was so frightened that he tipped over his chair. Stop everything, please, Miss Dillow said. Cockroach was hissing loudly, which made Centipede mad. If faced with danger, giraffes can deliver a kick with their front legs, powerful enough to hurt a lion. Their speed also helps them escape. Centipedes defend themselves by pinching with their back legs or biting with their front fangs. They can escape a predator by simply shedding the legs that are being held captive. New ones will grow in soon. Cockroaches attack other insects by kicking their legs, which are covered in sharp bristles. Stop! yelled Hippo. This isn't the real fire drill. Is it a real fire? Alligator screamed. Miss Dillo rolled herself into a ball. Alligator thrashed her tail wildly. Thwack! Everyone stopped to watch Miss Dillo fly across the room right into Hippo's mouth. Pelican smacked him on the back and out popped Miss Dillo. She rolled out of the classroom just as Miss Mingo returned from lunch. Mercy me! Miss Mingo cried. A mother alligator defends her hatchlings against predators by hissing, chomping her jaws, and using her most powerful weapon, a thrashing tail. To stay safe, a three-banded armadillo rolls into a grapefruit-sized ball, completely enclosing its body within its leathery plates or armor. Friday morning, students trickled into the classroom. Miss Mingo reviewed all they had learned about fire safety one more time. During the morning meeting, a siren blasted and bright red lights flashed. It's here, hollered Pig. It's the fire drill, Octopus cried. He squirted a cloud of ink into the room. But class stayed calm. Norwell helped some of his classmates to the doorway where students began to line up with their buddies. An octopus squirts a cloud of ink to confuse its enemies and then dashes away under the cover of a smoky screen. Miss Mingo led her class out of the room and down the hallway. Everyone protected their ears from the loud sound. There was no talking, there was no running, and no one stopped at the cubbies, although Alligator tried. The students were just about to exit the building when they found Chief Grizzly blocking the entrance with a sign that read fire. He smiled and then winked, and they knew this was a special test. Frog nodded, and the class filed out using the secondary route. Outside, the class formed a perfect line and stood in perfect silence while Miss Mingo called out every name. They were the very first class to be ready. Miss Mingo was so proud of her students, and so was Chief Grizzly, who rewarded them for a job well done. I'm so proud of Miss Mingo's class for learning all of the fire safety rules and getting out in the fire drill safely and remembering to use their secondary exit. It's something that they practiced even though they were afraid, and everybody did a great job. If you enjoyed this story, hit the like button so you don't miss another one and subscribe to read it again, Miss Jen. I'll see you soon.